Welcome everyone to Imaginations Tarot Reading on Your Next Emotional Entanglement. Now this could be romantical or any type of emotional connection, so stay tuned to find out by picking a pile. But first, I just want to say I am actively trying to uh, participate and engage in um, acknowledging where these videos are being made. So I just want to take a moment to say that this video is made in the region of Treaty 7 territory, the traditional lands of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Pikani, Kenai, and Siksika nations. Did I say that right? Siksika? I'm sorry if I did not. Uh, also, Iñahe Nakoda, Sutina, and the Region 3 Métis Nation of Alberta. And with that, let's have a look at the card piles. You have, this is card pile number one, with this lovely stone here. So this is one. Card pile number two. And card pile number three. So take a moment and feel what you are drawn to. I'll leave it for a minute right here. And with that being said, let's get ready to take out the cards and bring in pile number one. So let's get to it, shall we? We're going to put the rock up here. I have already uh, prepped the cards and found a reading. So pile number one, welcome to your reading. Uh, I'm going to start by putting out the foundation of the question right here. This was at the bottom of the deck. So we're looking at today uh, what your next emotional entanglement is. And by choosing this pile group number one, uh, the reason why you're kind of looking into it is because you have hermit energy. And now hermit energy is basically whoop, wrong side showing that, you know, you've been isolated. Go figure during these times, right? Am I right? But yeah, you're looking about who you want to connect with next uh, because you're still in that isolated mode. So whether it's meeting new friends, whether it's making some sort of intellectual connection or if it's having romance, you're interested in having that opportunity come forward, but you don't feel like it's plausible right now. So that's why you're kind of looking into the cards to try and find out information as to who and what and how and why all the goodies. So this first card is going to represent yourself. And group number one, we start off with having the Nine of Cups reversed card. Now, that basically, I'm going to get used to positioning, I promise. But that basically says, group number one, that things aren't exactly looking like how you've wished them to be. Less than ideal. Or maybe you have gotten something, but it's like pretty lackluster, or not exactly how you envisioned it, and therefore... You're feeling unsatisfied. Another way to look at it, too, is that you could have gotten what you wanted, and that was a mistake. That whole little saying of careful what you wish for always applies with the Nine of Cups, in my opinion, anyway. So we have you as a person who is feeling pretty isolated, interested in seeing who will be coming up because you're not feeling like overly fulfilled emotionally right now. Well then, group number one, let's see who your entanglement person is represented by. And they are represented by, I know it's far away here, this is why I show you in the other um, angle, shall we say, but this is the tower reversed. And so with a tower reversed, we have either after a period of, uh, you know, change, if things have been restructured in your life, or, you know, maybe you kind of already know them, right? And they've been going through this big deconstruct change too. Maybe it's changing up the dynamic of how you're 
emotional connection between one another is once you get out of the kind of hermiting phase. Interesting pile number one. Very, very interesting, I dare say. Let's see the when. Oh, no, I forgot. There is two to describe this person. My bad. When will come next? I'll get the hang of this someday <laughs> for the video broadcasting type thing. Anyway, group number one. The other component that the Fallout cards wanted to tell you about the person in question for your emotional entanglement is also the Ten of Wands. So this person has been equally burdened throughout this time. They may not be technically hermiting, but they've got a lot on their plate, so they haven't been making a lot of space either for emotional connection. So it seems like they're, you know, coming out of this kind of tower scenario, which could be, you know, this whole state of affairs right now, or maybe it's something more personal in their life. It also could uh, be a reflection that, um, it's not entirely a surprise as to what has been happening in their life with the whole shift and restructuring and changing and rebirth uh, because they've got a lot to be doing. Like they're, they're like, I have to pick up my entire life. You know, I have to fix everything. I have to start over from scratch. And they've just got a lot of things on their mind, on their plates. And, you know, not exactly considering about emotional connections in um, the first place. Now, we will go to the when. This, Ace of Wands. So, for me, my dear group number one, the Ace of Wands, I love this. Look at all the fire and cute foxes. Ace of Wands is springtime. It's Cancer season. It's March 21st. It is in the Northern Hemisphere, of course. Uh, it is the time, for me personally, I associate with the time of Aries and the thawing of the world and uh, heat returning to the planet and all this warmth and radiance kind of drawing us out again towards the light. So perhaps during the springtime season is when this uh, entanglement, emotional connection might be coming into play. Then, um, I know we had two cards that came out next, which was to describe how that entanglement was going to be. And we have the Four of Swords reversed, or sorry, the Five of Swords reversed, my apologies, and the Four of Cups. So, when I look at these, I basically see that, you know, uh, you know, there's going to be interesting communication going on between the two of you, whomever this person is that you'll be connecting with. You'll be able to have dialogue. You won't feel threatened by this person. This person's not going to be bullying you in any way. In fact, you'll probably have a lot of same and similar types of mentalities, uh, lots of um, engaging conversation that you want to have together, as well as with your mutual groups. So you may even expand each other into your own circles or meet through your circles. Uh, the interesting thing about the Four of Cups here is that, you know, there is almost something of a lackluster with this connection. We'll explore it further because I'm going to have cards to clarify all these. But I'm almost thinking, like, it's either possibly, for some of you, a connection that you've already known, so it's not like, what? new person or it is um, basically the same type of energy or something that you're not attracted to romantically so maybe you were hoping that you'd be like boom coming out of my hermit shell and we're just gonna get all sexy up in here and instead you're meeting um, intellectual beings that you have good communication with lots of lively conversation but it's not like yes on the romantical feelings front which is like okay you know like making connections is making connections people are people are nice people are good um so it seems 
and we will look to clarifying this further. But thus far, I would say almost as if we're just getting into like a friendly talk here on the emotional front. But let's check it out. So this is the foundation card. So clarifying yourself. Mm. All right. So group number one, we have two of swords as what's clarifying your uh, nine of cups reversed. So there's something else that you've been holding on to, something that you can't really decide. What I really like, I'm going to have to get real close here. You see this? This little heart dangling in a tree and this person holding two swords down there with the swan guarding it. I like in this deck that it's like the guardian of the heart. You know, they're willing to just defend that shit. They are like, nobody come near this. Um, so sensitive emotional feelings may be also part of the blockages with getting your wish fulfillment, which may be more about making connections on a romantic level rather than just a friendship level. Let's explore next. They also had two cards come out here. So, ooh. So what will be interesting, my dear group number one, around this individual is the King of Swords and the Ten of Pentacles, right? So this individual is coming out of a tower moment. They are overwhelmed and quite burdened with stuff, but, <laughs> very logical being, uh, intellectual types, air signs as a possibility or strong air placements, uh, could be more of like into science, into statistics, into data, all that kind of stuff, you know, uh, maybe not as emotional of a type, but yeah, you get to have really interesting and great conversations with this person you know, with that five of swords reversed. But this person also is 10 of pentacles, either material or also looking for a 10 of pentacles kind of connection. Um, because, you know, you have this uh, logical energy. For me, kings are genderless. They're more projective energy. So the act of putting it out there energy rather than receptive is a person who is kind of putting their out, out, their out there energy, their energy out there uh, to make connections, be intellectually stimulated, almost like a sapiosexual really is what I'm getting. And they're interested in finding their connection and building their future with another person through a meeting of the minds. So in one way, for some of you out there, it may be that this person does have a bit of a connection or attraction to you because you have this whole five of swords being able to, you know, uh, have good conversation. So they may, for some of you, be attracted to you, but you may not be to them because there's the four of cups showing up. Or for other portions of you, it could be that you're both lackluster on the romantic connection but good on the like mental stimulation but it's not getting more um intense than that let's see what's next oh yes in the springtime which would be that ace of wands card we have the quality of the six of swords upright and that very much is just, you know, things are getting easier for both of you, whether it's for you coming out of your hermit status and for this other individual that they are, you know, recovering from the tower and don't have as many burdens on their shoulders. This is very much the time when you're both starting to flow a little bit easier in life. You know, maybe there's more openness in society as well. Uh, things aren't as shut down. Things aren't as turbulent. And that's when connections are going to be able to start coming into your sphere. Uh, lastly, we have the Knight of Cups. 
So what I would say group one is that whether or not um, this ends up in being a romantic relationship, this entanglement, whether it lasts a long time as friends or more, etc., it's a good connection, basically. You do feel happy about the connection with this person that you're making. What I really see here is not a lot of like, you know, romance, more so feeling friend zones, pretty hardcore. So I've also pulled a guidance card, which is um, the Universal Law of Creation deck. I really love this deck. My mentor back in the early days had co-created this deck and it's beautiful um, fractal designs all about different laws of creation. This one is the universal law of emotion. So let's look at this, especially when we've talked about in a friend context, and I'm going to read you some information from the little booklet here so that I don't mess it up. So it says, mm -hmm. stare into the fractals. The law of emotion states that emotion is energy in motion. And your ability to feel and express emotion is also your ability to influence the movement of energy. Your emotions are a powerful force that you can use to experience individuality and to fuel your thoughts into creation. You are the pure intelligent essence directing your emotions and you are not your emotions. Pay attention to what you feel because whatever you are feeling will gradually shape the conditions in your life, which will show up as physical things, people, events, and circumstances. I want to pause here, even though that's not the whole thing, and just kind of bring up this whole Nine of Cups Reversed Energy group one. Because I have this deeper feeling still that most of you, maybe, I don't know, can't speak for everyone, but there's a strong feeling that people were like, oh, I really wish that there was like romance that had come through this message. And so I find it very interesting that this is like a, almost a tainted wish. It's the emotions card as well. And here we have the guidance card that is telling you that how you feel creates your reality, which is pretty much a nine of cups energy. So I think they really want you to pay attention and listen to how to work with these things. So I'm not going to read the whole thing because I feel like we've reiterated that. Let's go to how to harmonize with this law. All right. Move your awareness to your emotions as you lovingly, gently, and without judgment observe what surfaces. Are you feeling good or are you feeling bad? You can shift your emotions by immersing yourself in activities that lift your spirits. Make a list of what makes you feel good, including songs, movies, books, poems, and other things to do or engage with that make you feel good. Keep this list handy. When you are feeling down, select and act on something from the list to shift your energy and change your mood. Now, I also want to bring up that, you know, a lot of things that we enjoy in life have been uh, sort of put on hold for the moment because of, you know, the scenario in the world, depending on where you are in the world. But really, uh, still being able to find ways of uh, finding joy in the scenario now is important and will help shift this lackluster, stuck feeling energy that, you know, what you want isn't really coming to fruition. And then there's also beliefs around that about like it can't come to fruition based on the time. But things will start to open up in the springtime definitely will start to open up in the springtime. So my group number ones, this is the end of your reading. Uh, I thank you so much for coming along and having a listen. Let me know in the comments if any of this resonates for you, how that works out. Uh, I'm starting out here, so please check me out at imaginationwitch.com if you want to see any of the other things that I do, as well as uh, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button. I guess those things 
uh, matter to the bots. The bots need to know what you like. Tell them you like tarot and you'll get more of that good stuff. So group one, thank you so much and uh, we'll see you later. Bye bye. And next step, we are going to go to, we are going to go to group number two, which is, once I find the crystal, the green one. Oh, look, there we go. So let's get into it. We've got the foundation of the card. We've got our guidance card to be able to reference. And we've got the stuff that fell out. Now, group number two, I need to tell you this fallout happened extremely different than group number one, in case you may have watched that doing some cross watching. This one I was focusing and shuffling on these cards had like an amazing, insanely synchronistic fallout. Five cards on one side, five cards on the other side and three cards in the middle that were flipped up right and i just took that to be this is the spread one side the other side and the bridge in between so that's how we're going to look at this today all right so i'm going to lay out the side that is you group number one and that's the first five cards and then we will talk about the foundation reason and yourself okay Let's have a look. So group number two, we have Page of Swords as the reason why you're asking the question or watching this video is a better way to say that. So when you came to this pick a pile video, uh, you were interested by looking into your next entanglement from sort of a, a curious Maybe it's someone that I know that I'll hear from. Maybe it's some sort of like, ooh, fresh new starts that I am thinking about uh, bringing into my life. So there's an innate curiosity here, but from like a, from an intellectual level, like I'm just curious to know, please tell me the information, my dear tarot reader. Um, yeah, great sense of curiosity, I feel, with this card. So... For my group number two let's talk about you we have some beautiful cards right off the bat and the magician which in this deck is called seduction then we have the king of cups mm, lovely non-gendered this is projective energy seven of wands nine of wands and the two of pentacles reversed so let's talk about these so with the card seduction, look at that. This is like the all powerful, like I can have whatever I desire because I draw it to me. I get them to succumb to my will, right? And that is basically magician energy is will creating reality. So my dear pile number two, you are in some good energy right now. You are able to manifest your thinking, feeling, doing, like I have this idea it sounds like a great idea and then I'm gonna think about how I want to do it and it makes me really excited and then I'm gonna actually start doing it good for you you're using your time well and not that other people aren't using their time well I just want to point out it's more about the fact that you feel really empowered right now and that's showing through in pretty much anything you put your efforts into right now also you're coming from an extremely healthy emotional place so pile number two you know whether it's been doing a lot of self-work whether it's been getting therapy whether you've just been in a different scenario than a lot of other people perhaps the context of um, reality for you right now is not as stressful as for other people you are emotionally stable right now, mature, uh, able to nurture other people, able to be a support for other people. You are full within yourself, um, know when to take time to replenish yourself, but can also equally give to other people. What I find interesting next is these two cards. So the seven of wands, I find very interesting in looking at your next entanglement. And the reason is, particularly because of this deck. 
I think you're looking for that passion. And either someone to connect with a passion as in like, I'm making my passion project or creativity, etc. But I will say perhaps more that it's about long-term partnership. Now, this is different than most decks, obviously, and not the traditional readings. But look at this artwork. You have, you know, finding that one passion, young people together embracing, you know, really enjoying each other, enjoying bodily fluids, enjoying things that have germs, you know, like we used to. Um, and then you have the nine of wands, which can also be about like woundings. But look at this. It's a photo of a young couple. And then because vampires are immortal, him kissing goodbye, the person of his union who he grew old with. Now, of course, this does not have to be a heteronormative discussion here. OK, so applying to everyone. It's about the fact that whatever, you know, gets your passion going on a relationship narrative, it seems like you're interested in looking at it from the long haul, even though you know that it's going to take having to defend, having to stand up for certain things, both for you and your other person, as well as it will hurt along the way, but it will be worth it, right? I mean, there is something about this card where if you're, you know, kissing your partner goodbye before they drew the less breath, that's very, like, emotionally painful to think about. But, you know, this person definitely committed to doing it anyway, right? So I feel like, pile number twos, that you are very much interested in finding making reality happen for you, uh, feeling really emotionally full, and wanting to really call in some sexy energy, sexy, passionate, connected, loving energy that lasts a lifetime. And then lastly for you, pile number two, we have the two of pentacles reversed. And uh, for me, that can be several things. What I find very interesting in this deck is the young lady, old lady, right? Doing ballet. First, I want to say, it reminds me almost of seeing your future self, right? You're in your reality now, one pentacle, but there's almost being able to know of your future self. But in the reverse, you don't fully see yourself appropriately, like, or right side up, right? You are seeing things kind of backwards in the mirror or not getting a clear enough picture or maybe are having more difficulty envisioning what that future looks like, even though you know that it's there. This card also talks about the fact that uh, there could be uh, issues with juggling multiple realities, or maybe you're juggling multiple people, or maybe some of you out there are, you know, uh, also being able to finally let go instead of maintaining balance of juggling things, being able to be like, you know what, I'm going to let this one go and I'm going to focus on this other pentacle. So interesting energy going on for a bunch of you out there different scenarios and i would love to hear if there is some sort of um correlations between all of the differences because that was a, a whole bunch of things coming through in different ways cards are fascinating when you do group readings so what i'm going to do next group number two is that i'm going to bring out the next set of five cards for the other individual and we'll look at those and then we'll look at the connecting cards. And then we'll come to our advice. So here we go. We have the King of Pentacles reversed, the Ten of Pentacles reversed, the Queen of Pentacles reversed, the Two of Wands upright, and the Four of Pentacles reversed. Okay, 
Okay, pile number two is the person that uh, is in question around the next emotional entanglement. Let's talk about this because I'm getting a couple of things here. Um, firstly, ooh, ooh, I'm so sorry. I hit the wrong button. I will get used to hitting buttons simultaneously. I apologize. We have King of Pentacles reversed. All right. So I want to start with this first narrative that really came through strongly for me, this king and queen reversed as well as the ten of pentacles reversed. And I'm really feeling like this individual could be in a really toxic home scenario, perhaps living at home with mom and dad or paternal figures. doesn't exactly have to be mom and dad. Uh, but it seems like authority figures of familial sense and just not, this is like, not what I envisioned my life to be kind of energy, right? Ten of pentacles reversed. I did not want this. This is not what I want. This isn't my like dreams of how I want to be living my future at this age. And it may be that the people that this individual is housing with could either be seen by the individual as negative because they're feeling this Ten of Pentacles, but there's also a high possibility that they are potentially toxic um, and contributing and exacerbating the situation. And so what really came through for me for this individual is that they're dreaming. They're like, yeah, you know what? I need to figure out where to go next. I need to plant some seeds. I need to put some intentions out there. I need to get some stuff coming to me, some opportunities, and I need to be able to, I'm just going to walk away. I'm going to walk away from whatever I have. You know, I'm willing to let it all go to be able to go for something new here because I just need to get out of this scenario. Um, so very interesting narrative in that one sense. Um, that came through extremely strongly. So an individual who may be forced to have to live at home with parental figures and uh, possibly in a very toxic home environment who's interested in manifesting a new reality so that they can get the fuck out, basically, so they can walk away and let it all go. They're fine with letting everything go. The next way I see this is... Um, again, maybe that the person that you may meet is themselves not interested in committing at all on a, a like emotional long-term life partner kind of way uh, they could have very strong earth energy a lot of this whole section is earth so that's Taurus Virgo Capricorn or strong earth placements but they could also be extremely stubborn and they could have a lot of parental issues Maybe like, you know, toxic past, toxic family household narrative could be with them and that they're more so having to deal with releasing that kind of stuff than being open to starting some sort of like, you know, lifelong commitment with another person. They may not even know how to dream that vision of a Ten of Pentacles because they've had um, a very different upbringing and so it's about having to deconstruct more so that upbringing uh, before they can uh, find their dream that they want to work towards. And so that person's energy may be very much about trying to um, bring in passion, basically. And it could very much be I'm drawn to a lot you know, uh, not just the looking on the outside in, but the three people. For some reason, this two of wands for me is coming up, especially with this, this like indulging in other people in hot, um, quick, passionate things rather than long-term commitment um, because they're afraid of connecting on that inner 
you know, home realm, and they'd rather stay distanced and on the outside. And then we have this four of wands, or sorry, four of pentacles reversed. And this is very much this like very dominant figure that sits at the head of the table. Um, and I just very much feel in this particular narrative that they may be possibly reenacting some of that energy from the past that are learned behaviors. So if you see some interesting behaviors coming out of a person, um, it could be from their past family upbringing, more of that environment and, and what they learn. So how on earth does your emotional entanglement <laughs> work between the two of them because you're doing pretty good and you're looking for something like long lasting and this other person is pretty much in complete opposition shall i say and the three cards are very 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 interesting so we have the world card which is called peace the lovers card which is called the bond and five of wands reversed Hmm, very, very interesting. So what I'm getting from this is, an, let's just talk about this. The first thing that I get from this is that uh, all about starting new chapters of life. For you, group number two, it could be about going to, you know, following the route, manifesting, if you want to have families, etc. Putting that energy out there, bringing it in. You may be meeting people who don't align with that, and that's okay. You're willing to turn the page and acknowledge that they're allowed to have their own journey. It brings you peace. You aren't disturbed over the fact that you meet a person who's not walking the same path. If you meet a person and they're like, nah, I totally don't want to have any commitment right now, and you do, you're like, I'm okay with that because you're allowed to be in the space that you want to be. And then we have the bond. And from what I'm just brought up, I see this more as not a bond between the two of you, but more of like, there's a mirroring here, right? Of the hands touching and um, the chalice. And I see this as uh, a mutual acceptance of each other, you know, a mutual respect, even though based on the narrative, you're completely opposites. So it is also about making choices and choosing, you know, whether to invest this time or not in the other person. But I am really getting with that whole world card that you're going to basically choose to turn the page and continue on your path and accept that they have a different path to walk and that's okay. And because of that, I think we had the five of ones reversed, right? Um, I hope I didn't just mess that up. Pretty sure it was like this. We'll find out. You'll let me know in the comments, right? Did I mess this up? Either way, I think the five of ones reversed basically says it's not about feeling conflicted anymore about meeting people who don't align with you. You don't feel so frustrated. You don't kind of get your back up and go, ah, why? Or, you know, uh, maybe hanging around for a person that you think would fit this model or narrative that you want in your life. And they are being honest and saying, hey, no, I don't want to have any commitment. And you're like, maybe if I just wait, they'll eventually, you know, see how awesome I am. It's none of that narrative. It's very much this, like, we've released tensions, arguments around this whole thing. So the person that you're having your next um, emotional entanglement with doesn't seem to really be about having this long-term connection. But what I do feel, especially with the world card, is that you're manifesting a whole new reality. And this is kind of like a test from the universe. And they're saying, hey, this may be some sort of like old thing that you used to do a lot and we want to make sure that you're done with this so that you can move forward and making strong choices, being able to release a lot of stuff. 
And so this person is being drawn into your life as part of your magician energy to be able to prove to yourself that you can let all of that go, that you've truly shifted and that you're ready to bring in, you know, that emotional stability and, and passion that you want to fight for and last for a lifetime. So with that being said, group number two, let's look at the guidance card. Queen Mab. This is a Dragon Fae Oracle deck. And I will. Oh my. Find where I put a book. Because clearly I'm organized. Creative energy. Let's have a look see at Madame Mab. Ah, very interesting. Almost like group number one, uh, the guidance card had to do with the very first card of, of themselves as well. So the book suggests that this card, working with Queen Mab, is about getting back to the basics of enchantment and magic, reconnecting with old ways and seeing them as eternal, understanding karmic history of your area and applying the principles and lessons in the present moment can also be telepathically receiving messages and trusting in them, knowing that your thoughts have energy and can have an immense impact on what happens. For example, the threefold law. Uh, indulge in some old fashioned magic, believe in your own abilities and trust in the ancient ways of wisdom that run in your blood as well as in the planet's heartbeat. And that is very much magician energy. It's about your own power. It's about putting out there what you want to be able to manifest. It's, you know, magic, magician, you got this. So basically your advice from Queen Mab is to just keep doing what you're doing. Keep being confident. Keep knowing that you have all the skills, all the abilities to be able to do and walk the path that you want to walk. You got this. You killing it. But just because there's a book I'm going to give the working with Meb energy, which suggests respect old magics. Learn more about ancient lineages of magic. This does not mean to become a creature of what is called the past, uh, but to understand and respect magical heritage and connections. Ask Mab to assist you clearly with defining and deciphering telepathic information, should you be receiving any, and ask Queen Mab to let you know how you can assist the Earth. Many of the creatures of this planet are now facing extinction. Mab assists them and will help you to activate others' care for them too. Older family members may also reveal that you have a magical lineage. They may do this in subtle ways, but they shall do it. So, interesting group number two. Yeah, very empowered group moving in great directions that you want. Ow, hit my hand. Ah, oh, the trauma. You're doing great. I love it. You are, you know, working towards being the best that you can be and bringing forward a vision, a future. Something quite magical, and I love seeing people being able to basically manifest and bring magic into this world, even if they don't call it that. So, group number two, this is the end of your session. You get your friendly reminder right now that you can check me out at imaginationwitch.com to see what else I get up to as fun stuff that I offer to the world. Uh, I also encourage you, please, to subscribe, like, maybe even share. Who knows? Apparently, the bots of the, you know, interwebs need to know this kind of stuff so that you get more tarot. And that, hopefully, maybe, it even comes from me. So group number two, peace out. Have a wonderful time. Let's move on over to group number three. Boom. The crystal. Group number three. I have brought up for you your foundation card, your guidance card, and we have... 
already the fallout cards ready to do this reading. So let's get into it, shall we? Uh, let's start with the reason why you are watching this video, particularly around the fact that you want to know about your next emotional entanglement. We have the Eight of Wands reversed. Da, 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 da. You're feeling stuck. You're like, nothing's happening in my life right now. I'm just sitting here. Nothing's going on. Might as well watch a tarot card reading. Maybe there's going to be something exciting that might be coming into my life later. Because I got nothing. Nothing is happening. Well, interesting motivations there, group number three. Don't blame you. It's always fun to, uh, you know, see what people may be saying. See what resonates with you. Ugh, which totally reminds me. I forgot to do the whole spiel of like, not everything resonates with everyone. Take it or leave it, etc. I hope that your savvy group number three and all the groups previous that uh, you're well-versed tarot individuals. <laughs> so let's um, pull out the cards. How this worked was that I did you, card for you, the sun, and nine of swords reversed. So group number ones, let's start with that. Okay, you feel like maybe not a lot is going on in your life, right? But it's not really that bad either. You know, things are bright. Maybe they weren't before. But at this stage, being pretty good. Finding joy in the way that you can find joys. Enjoying yourself in whatever way that you can. Radiating. Not sitting in, you know stress and anxiety anymore. Letting that go, letting it release. A sense of surrender is what I get basically for you, group number three, which is lovely, you know, lots of radiation, lots of warmth, and <laughs> definitely not the scary card of weird, abstract, scary things in your mind anymore. Person that is coming in into the emotional entanglement. Three of cups reversed, Ten of Pentacles reversed. Okay. Totally opposite energies. This is very similar to uh, pile number two, in a sense. Let's talk about that. You may be meeting a person. You're radiating your sunshine. You don't have a lot of anxieties. And that makes you a very open and appealing person. Well you may be meeting someone who just may indulge too much or who may be, you know, having some other things on the side if you tend to be more of a monogamous type uh, or is not being totally open and honest about their emotional connections. Even if you are a more poly type, they may not be as honest. But I don't know if that, you know, poly types I feel like are a lot more respectful around that. So anyway putting thoughts out there. Also, someone who is definitely not looking to commit. They're like, let's party. Things suck. I can't wait to just, you know, go out to bars when I can. I'd rather like have a good time. I might be drinking my face off a lot because I don't like this reality at all. And I have no desire to make any commitments. How can I make commitments or know anything going forward right now? So that's pretty severe. Way to go, Jen, for laying it out that way. But very opposite energies. Um, so then we have where and when shall you meet? And I was not smart enough to prepare my... Oh, dear. There it is. Uh, device, basically. I have uh, an interesting thing about minor arcana cards that I don't have memorized, of course, at this moment that talks about timing. But first, we'll talk about the Nine of Pentacles reverse. So it seems like that you will be meeting this person under a context of not being independent. So perhaps things have opened back up. Perhaps you're more in a group scenario now. Um, being able to 
mingle with other people, perhaps still at a distance because, you know, uh, even the Nine of Pentacles is very much about being distanced, um, singular, independent type energy. So it is very much about being able to connect with others, not just being in your own sort of tower type energy you're also getting past the boredom you're getting out there getting excitement again so basically this could be happening when things really start opening up i see these two cups here as well and the fact that you know if this person's like wanting to potty 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 um maybe restaurants have opened back up and you're going out to environments that may not be dance clubs per se but are more of uh you know, environments where you can drink in public, <laughs> basically. So I'm just bringing up here um, the document that I have on um, decans for minor arcana. And basically, it's a system of uh, timing that's been associated. And I think it comes from the Golden Dawn don't quote me on that one i should look up my history more but let's have a look at it we've got the four of cups is the third decan of cancer which is the 13th of july through to the 22nd of july so i really want to know i'm very interested in exploring the notion of timing okay so let me know in the comments did stuff come up during that time i am high curious because yeah decans decans I'm trying to share with you the decans let's uh let's have an experiment together let's see if it works so social engagements then we have uh the last card kind of like how it works and then advice going forward so we have the nine of wands reversed basically group number three, what I'm getting from this is that you're just not interested in having it. Perhaps that's kind of a vibe that you've had in your life before, perhaps a pattern that kind of comes up. Maybe someone who's like, yeah, I'm non-committal and I just want to party. And you're like, oh, that hurts. Like I've been there so many times and I keep thinking it would be different, but I keep getting wounded about it. So like, no, I just really don't want to open up to that whatsoever. Don't blame you. Don't blame you one bit. What is the outcome and suggestion? There were two cards that fell for this was the four of ones reversed and the high priestess. Yeah, baby. Definitely trust yourself. This entanglement, whomever you meet, whoever spikes that kind of wounded past stuff, that's the emotional connection that's happening here. It's not like positive emotions and love and light and joy. It's very much like, oh, why am I feeling this? I'm very triggered. It's because it's not going to be successful. Do not build foundations around this. Absolutely not. Trust yourself. You know, you know, it's a bad idea. Don't do it. Don't do it. Everyone has free will. And I get that. But when the high priestess comes up, look at this regal tiger. They know, they know it's not worth doing that. It's not the battle worth fighting. So my dears, that was a lot more straightforward than I was anticipating. Um, yeah, you're in a good place though. So don't let these people weigh you down. Don't let that triggering sense kind of weigh heavy on you. Just see it as, you know, your internal wisdom. Just know that you know what's best for you and you don't need to have that going on in your life. So let's look at, boom, your guide. It is a cobra. Don't mind my weird voices. You may learn over time that those just happen. I don't know. Cobra energy, fire energy. And this is the animal spirit guide from the wild unknown and i will consult their book so that uh, i do not lead you astray with this messaging pausing waiting and the inner teacher 
The cobra represents a teacher or spiritual guardian. The cobra hovers and watches, ever present, ever protecting, and ever loving. The essence of the cobra is found deep within us in the form of the inner teacher and manifests, and manifests externally in those special guides who've led us along our path. What would it feel like to be a student again? What are you ready to learn? Remember the old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. So, what can we take away from that? I think very much one, you know, when I see snake energy, especially cobra, it's like owning their power, standing in their confidence. They don't have to strike everything. They're not uber aggressive, but they'll let you know. You're like, no, you're bothering me. You should go away now. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like this goes very much with the pausing, the waiting, you know, you're in a good place, trust yourself. This isn't something that you need to get wrapped up into, but it is the lesson and teacher, interestingly enough, okay? You know, when the sun comes up and the uh, nine of swords reverse anti-anxiety, I feel like this person and the reason why you're having the emotional entanglement is because they are the teacher and you're like, Jen, why are they the teacher? That sounds like a horrible thing. They don't sound like they would be great at teaching stuff, but that's the whole point is to test your triggers, test what you've learned. They don't realize that they're the teacher. That's just how the universe is putting stuff in front of you to test you. So that's why this entanglement is coming into your life. Honor it, let it go, be strong in yourself, trust yourself, walk away from it, say what you need to say, but don't let it be on you. Dust that off your show, dust. None of it. So, group number three. I feel like you are in a good place and I want to keep seeing you. Group number three, continuing in your good place. I want to thank you so much for joining me. Let's do this one more time on the fact that, hey, you can check me out at imaginationwitch.com. See what else I'm getting up to. Building my empire. Also, share, like, subscribe, all the things that YouTube needs to get more and more tarot seen in your feed. So if you like, you know, hanging out with me doing tarot cards, uh, help me out by pushing those buttons. I feel like uh, you know the jam, and I appreciate you, pile number three. So I hope you had a great reading, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.